Let's do a brief reminder of exponents. Say we have something like negative 2 to the power of 3. Remember, negative 2 is what we call the base, 3 is the exponent. And what this means is we must take that base, negative 2, and we must multiply it together 3 times, because the exponent is 3. So we've got negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. What will that be equal to? Well, let's first deal with the signs. Here we've got negative times negative. It's a positive, and a positive times a negative. Our answer will be negative. And then we've got 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So our answer is negative 8. All right, what if we had negative 2 to the power of 4? Okay, again, your base is negative 2, so that's the thing you've got to multiply, and you've got to multiply it together four times, um, and so you get what we have here. Let's get the answer. Let's first deal with the signs. Here, negative times negative is positive, and you've got another negative times negative there. It's positive. So overall, you've got positive times positive. Your answer is going to be positive. We obviously don't have to actually put the positive sign in, but I'm just putting it down there now to remind us. And then 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So our answer here is 16. All right. What if we had negative 2 to the power of 5? Okay, we know the story, right? We're going to put negative 2 down 5 times and multiply them all together. I want you to just quickly predict for yourself. Do you think the answer is going to come out as positive or negative? What do you think? All right, let's see if you're right. You group those and you group those. That'll be negative times negative is positive. That's negative times negative is positive. And so overall, you're going to have a positive times a positive. It's positive times a negative is negative. Did you get your prediction right? And so then we'll get 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. So we get negative 32. Okay, we can carry on like this forever. And I want you just to think about negative 2 to the power of 6. Would that end up being positive or negative? Think about it. You can pause the video and see now if you what, how you'd come up, what answer you would come up with. Again, you could even go on to negative 2 to the power of 7 and see with that one. Do you think it's going to be positive or negative? I want you to try those for yourselves and see if you can get out the answer and see the pattern of when you come to a positive answer and when you come to a negative answer. Try those for yourself. You can always ask a facilitator if you can't see the pattern. Okay, one thing we just want to make very clear that we know the difference between is these two things we see here. Negative 2 to the 4 written like this and negative 2 to the 4 written like that. What is the difference between them? Well, the difference between them is in this top one. The thing that is, be, has, is being raised to the power of 4 is this whole thing, negative 2. Whereas in this one, the thing that's being raised to the 4, it's just the 2. So how do they differ? Well, in this one, the thing that is being raised to the power of 4 is negative 2. So it's negative 2 that needs to be written down 4 times. In this one, the thing that's being raised to the 4 is just the 2. So it is just the 2 that gets multiplied together four times. That little negative that's sitting outside here just sits outside, and then it's the two itself that gets multiplied together four times. So here you're going to end up with negative times negative is positive, negative times negative is positive, so the whole thing will be positive, and this will be 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, so you're going to end up with 16, and this one on the other hand will be negative 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, this one will be negative 16. So just very important, when it's inside brackets and raised to the 4, it's the whole thing, the whole negative 2 that gets written down 4 times. But when the power is just with the 2, then it's just the 2 that gets written down 4 times. OK, let's deal with square roots. What do they mean? If I write square root of 9, I'm asking myself, what no positive number, when multiplied by itself, gives you 9 as an answer. 
In other words, I'm saying if I want to get what is the square root of 9, right? I want to get that. I want to know what that is equal to. What it's equal to will be the number that when multiplied by itself ends up giving me 9 as the answer. Well, you know that 3 times 3 gives me 9 as the answer. So in other words, the square root of 9 is equal to 3. Now, that was a simple one, but we can do it in all sorts of funny forms. So, whenever we're asking ourselves for the square root of some number, so we want to get what that is equal to, then what we're asking ourselves is what number times by itself will give us that thing there, that thing there that's underneath the square root as the answer. So let's give ourselves a very funny one. Say they asked us what's the square root of 16 times 16. Well, the question they're asking us then is what number when multiplied by itself will give us the answer of 16 times 16? Well, this is actually a bit of a strange question because obviously if you want to know what times what gives you 16 times 16, the answer is 16 times 16 gives you 16 times 16. So the square root of 16 times 16 is just 16. We have a very similar story with the cube root. So if we're looking for the cube root of 64, what we're asking ourselves is what number multiplied together three times will give me the answer of 64. And you should know immediately that it's 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. So this cube root is 6, is, the cube root of 64 is 4. Now, let me just remind, tell you that it would be really helpful for yourself if you learn off by heart all of these. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, all the way up to 12 squared is 144. And similarly, that 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, all the way up to, let's just say, 6 cubed is 216. Write those down for yourself and learn them off by heart because it actually will help you when you're trying to quickly identify cubes, cube roots, squares, square roots, and that kind of thing. Okay, a funny one though. What's the cube root of 29 cubed? Well, if we're wanting to work that one out, right, we're wanting to know what times what times what is equal to 29 cubed. And your knowledge of exponents should tell you that 29 cubed is just 29 times 29 times 29. So this, the cube root of 29 cubed, is just 29. When you were younger, you used bod mass. Now that we are fully aware of exponents, we use bed mass. And bed mass just tells us we first, when we've got something to do, we first look at the brackets, then we look at the exponents, then we do division and multiplication. Those are at the same level, doesn't matter which order we do those two in, and addition and subtraction are the very last things that we do. Okay, here's an example for us to look at. Bed mass tells us, first look for brackets, well there aren't any. The next thing we look for are exponents. So we need to deal with these exponents first. So our next line will be 3 plus 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, minus 5 times 2 plus 7. The next thing that we do, according to bed mass, is any division or multiplication. Well, we've got multiplication over here, so that's what we need to do next. So we will have 3 plus 8. 8 minus 5 times 2 gives me 10 plus 7. And then after that, according to bed mass, I must do addition and subtraction. Those are at the same level, addition and subtraction. So if I've only got addition and subtraction left in my calculation, I just work from left to right. So I say 3 plus 8, that gives me 11. 11 minus 10 that gives me 1, and 1 plus 7 gives me my final answer of 8.